Okay, we're waiting for Ms. Clements to come back in. She stepped out for just a second. We're back from recess. Um, our next case is a variance request, VAAP 22-0256, Villas at Lexwood. And Ms. Clements, are you ready to present for the county? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The last public hearing tonight is variance application 22-0256, the Villas at Lexwood. The application requests a variance from the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, section 32.3.4, and from Schedule 32.1 to reduce the required open space from 50% to 0%. From section 51.3.1, or excuse me, 0.14, a4 to reduce the minimum width of a townhouse to 16 feet and from section 71.5.2 b to disturb the non-tidal wetland buffer the legal advertisement was printed on january 19th 2024 and january 26 2024 in the southern maryland news certified mailings were sent to the adjacent property owners located within 200 feet of the project property, and a public hearing sign was posted on the property on or before January 24th, 2024. Okay, the property owner is AYDCO Holdings, LLC, and the agent for this proposal is Mr. Christopher Longmore, and the property consists of 3.985 acres. The property is located on Lexwood Drive Bill, in Lexington Park. Your meeting ID followed by pound. Hold on. Excuse me. Okay. Enter your participant okay. ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. I think I think that should end that. Okay. Okay. <coughs> there we go, location. The property is located on Lexwood Drive in Lexington Park. The land use de designation for the property is residential high density. And it is zoned residential high density district or RH. Okay. The property is currently undeveloped. The applicant is proposing 40 townhomes, but in order for that, they need a variance from the open space standards, which requires 50% open space. Additionally, the applicant needs a variance to reduce the townhome width from 20 feet to 16, and additionally, they would like to disturb the non-tidal wetland buffer. The Planning Commission has approved the concept plan on uh, June 26, 2023, at their public hearing. Okay. The existing structures and is associated, um, I'm sorry, here we go. We have the site plan. Okay. Here's the villas. Here's the ingress and egress. Here are the townhomes located on the perimeter with a few in here interior and then we've got um, at what I believe to be a community center right there okay the existing features map 
some of the stormwater management details. There we go, and a close-up of the site plan. Is there any questions? Anyone have any questions for Ms. Clements? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, thank you, Ms. Clements. You're welcome. Mr. Lawmore? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. These are um, my clients, the two representatives of my client that are here. They'll both be testifying. Okay. Uh, if you wish, you'll swear them in now. I will. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimonies, the responses, and the statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. And if you would, one at a time, give us your name and address, please. Yep. Matt Aki at 716 Camden Avenue, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Can you spell that last name, please? Wait for that. A U C H E Y. Okay. And you, and, sir? Uh, my name is Chase Powell. Um, my address is uh, 1000 uh, Lakefront Lane, Unit 304. That is in Salisbury, Maryland, also 21804. Thank you. And for the record, Mr. Longmore. All right. My, the, Chris Longmore, I'm the legal counsel for the applicant tonight with Dugan McKissick and Longmore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're, we're honored to be here tonight, and we're excited to be here to share this project with you. Um, as Ms. Clements mentioned, we were before the Planning Commission on June 26th of last year. The Planning Commission um, reviewed the, the application and granted concept site plan approval with a 7 to 0 vote. Um, during that uh, presentation, we did share with them the three variances that ultimately we knew we would be before you seeking here tonight. One of the reasons why, and, and I'll, let, I'll turn it over to my clients uh, momentarily, that um, Personally and professionally, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Is as the board know, there is a tremendous need for affordable housing in our community, uh, particularly in the Lexington Park area. Um, the applicant that's here today has a strong footprint already in our community, right in the neighborhood where this property is. Um, they are the ones that are, are really doing great work in the community. They're going to present. Um, more about the project than just the variance request so that the board can get familiar with what they're doing, who they are, um, and then we'll address the standards as we go. And we do, um, for the record, and I know the board is aware, uh, we did submit a letter addressing the standards for all three variance requests tonight that's in the record, and we'd ask that it remain that way uh, so the record is clear. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Powell uh, so he can present our PowerPoint or begin to present it, and then I'll jump in as needed. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Uh, please pull up the next slide. Okay, give me a moment. There. So, um, like I said, my name is Chase Powell. I'm the Director of Development at Green Street Housing. We are the applicant and developer uh, for the project. Um, the, the development of affordable housing is our bread and butter. Um, we have built, uh, I believe, 23 properties across uh, Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia. Um, I think in total, our total development cost that we have managed is flirting with probably $500 million. Um, so, you know, we, uh, we are experts in this, if you will. Um, the, uh, the project, Villas at Lexwoods, um, is the proposed construction of 40 um, family townhome uh, homes uh, off of Lexwood Drive. Um, that will include one, two, and three bedroom homes. Uh, the, the project's going to be financed primarily from sources from uh, the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, we won a competitive allocation of tax credits uh, last fall. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with the, the low-income housing tax credit program, that is a competitive application process. We competed with other projects across the state, and we put forth a proposal that you know, pass the competitive uh, muster. So um, our community is going to include a, a clubhouse, which will have a community room, a fitness center. Um, we will have tenant services programming at the property. Uh, we are partnering with uh, the St. Mary's County um, Housing Authority. Uh, they are a uh, owner and participant in the project. Um, and um, we're very eager and excited to, to work with them on this development. Um, 
one thing to note is that, um, and we'll get into this in the next slides, but the villas at Lexwoods is across the street from the Lexwoods Apartments project, uh, which we completed in uh, 2019. Um, so we're proposing to use the same development team on this project um, as well, including the, the owners, developer, general contractor, um, and architect. So um, go ahead and uh, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so I highlighted the team uh, a little bit. Like I said, I'm with Green Street Housing. Um, we're partnering with TM Associates Development and Management as well. So TM has an existing footprint off of uh, Lexwoods Drive. Uh, they currently own alongside of us and they manage uh, Lexwoods Apartments. Like I said, it's across the street. Um, and they also um, currently own and manage uh, Great Mills Court and Joe Baker Village, which is in the, uh, the cul-de-sac farther down Lexwoods Drive. So um, independently of um, the villas at Lexwoods, we're also renovating both of those communities through a uh, common plan of development. So when all is said and done, it'll be the same owner and developer who is managing four properties along that street, which will offer, you know, consistency in um, management over that, that neighborhood. So um, next slide, please. So this is a uh, picture of uh, Luxwood's apartments. Um, like I said, we completed this development in uh, 2019. It's 78 units. Um, this facade and exterior is what you could expect to see at the villas at Luxwood's. Uh, so next slide. Um, so as Chris said, you know there there's a need for affordable housing. Um, that's very much a national problem. It's a regional problem, but it's also very much a local problem um, as well. So part of our due diligence is that we have a market analysis performed um, and a real property research group uh, pr prepared such a report for us. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the numbers here, but you know, generally speaking, within the market area, which was defined as uh, California, Lexington Park, Callaway, and then all, all the way down to uh, Piney Point, you know, 31% of the renters in this market area earn less than uh, $35,000 uh, per year. Um, and our project um, is, is set aside for families that earn up to 30 and 40% of the area median income. And just to put that in perspective, for a family of four within um, St. Mary's County, at 40% of AMI, that's $48,400 per year, right? So we are very much within the, the target demographic um, to serve the, the needs of the community by providing this, uh, this housing type. Um, so one other phenomenon we see as well is that when we build new affordable housing, there is an absorption phenomenon where um, folks who live in probably substandard naturally occurring affordable housing or other uh, substandard affordable housing will move into our community um, as well. So uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so to our variance requests, um, you know, we are looking for a variance on the townhome width. Uh, we'd like to reduce that from 20 feet wide uh, down to uh, 16 feet uh, for the two bedroom uh, townhome units. Uh, that would apply to 24 of the homes in total. Um, the, the total square footage of those units will be 1,000 square feet. That's well in line with the typical two bedroom housing product that we provide across all of our communities. Um, it'll offer ample space for the, uh, the residents. Um, and then our three bedroom units are gonna be in excess of 1,400 square feet. Um, so we, we accommodate for the reduction in width by the units going deeper. Um, so we believe that it will provide ample square footage uh, for the, the residents. Chase, before you move on, can you just sure. go to the next slide real fast? Um, we provided uh, floor plans of one of the uh, two-bedroom apartments. So on your left, you have the first floor, and on the right is the second floor. So we wanted to show you how it would lay out. You know, you have your standard living room, furniture, couch, love seat. Uh, TV, uh, dining room area for a small table, 
Um, it's a two bedroom, so you're you're talking anywhere from two to four uh, family members. So adequate size dining table, a, a nice L-shaped kitchen. Um, actually provide laundry in the units uh, on the first floor. Um, and then on the second floor, um, you'll see that there's a full bath, two nice size bedrooms, the furniture all fits, you know, anything you would see in a market rate apartment. So we thought this would be a helpful visual of how the depth adds to the actual uh, size of the um, townhome, even though it's a little bit more narrow. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, <clears throat> we're also seeking a variance for the, uh, the open space requirement, um, which would be 50% undeveloped open space. So, but by definition, um, our entire parcel um, is, is an existing stormwater management easement. So the idea is that as it exists today, zero uh, uh, percent, it has zero percent undeveloped open space. Um, so we think it's well within our our ability to ask for um, that variance. Um, and then finally, we're also let me jump in yeah, again. So it's it. fun to yeah. do. Um, yeah. So while we're saying zero on zero uh, percent, you know, we do have open space planned in this development. It's much like the neighboring properties. Um, we can probably go down like. Can you go to the slide that has the um, layout of the, the um, community right there? So if you look at this plan, um, we have a, a circular drive. Um, I think it's important to note the shape of our um, site as well. It's a very thin, long site, um, currently all being utilized as a runoff for stormwater of all the surrounding sites. So it's undeveloped. It's not really shaped. It's just the natural terrain. Water goes there, kind of floods, and then it dissipates. So. The idea is we're going to take all that water and do a proper design stormwater management facility, which you'll see in the far right of the site. Um, and because we have to take on not only our own water, we have to take on the water of the neighboring properties, that stormwater pond becomes extra large, which isn't normal for a, a piece of land this small. Um, so we're going to treat everybody's water properly. We're going to do a, uh, you know, a wetland that, or a stormwater pond that's actually a little bit deeper, can hold the water properly, treat it, and as you'll see, it takes up almost a quarter of the site. Um, another reason why we're very constrained within the site. Um, another thing to note looking at this site is the access. So you'll see we have a circular drive, you know, getting, you know, emergency vehicles in and out. We didn't want to create dead ends. So we have a circular drive that takes up a good portion of the site. Um, however, in the center, as Chase alluded to, there is a community building. Um, we're going to have an outdoor play area for the children to gather to play. Um, just like we would in any of our neighborhoods. Um, behind all the townhomes, they will have rear doors with rear um, porches, um, little concrete stoops so they can have their grill, they can be outside. Um, by no means do we feel like we're constraining anybody or creating anything outside the ordinary or unsafe. Um, so I just wanted to highlight some of those constraints that this particular site um, alludes to, so that's all. Yeah, and Chase, if I could jump in for a minute. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, as I think the board is aware, uh, the project engineer on this project is Pat Mudd. He's available by phone if you have any specific questions for him. Um, to highlight something, Matt, you said, and, and I think you can confirm this as well, is that the stormwater management design that's being placed in here, as, as Matt mentioned, will be treating all the runoff and will be treating it to modern day standards instead of kind of the existing undevelopment undeveloped stormwater that's servicing the other properties. So we think that will be an upgrade, um, both in qual quality and quantity uh, to manage the stormwater management there and therefore will be beneficial to the environment. Retention and, type. Excuse me? Retention type. Yes, yep. yes. And this, this also, if you go back to the side with the variances, kind of dovetails into the last request, which is um, disturbing the wetlands. The way the site is now, because all the drainage has made its way to the site over time, it naturally has created wetlands, um, which, you know, right now there's not much value to that. We went to MDE and asked them, you know, by creating this new pond, are we, you know, creating a better scenario for the site? And they agreed yes, um, because it wasn't really designed to ever naturally be that. So they already approved us to have um, disturbance in that area by creating the new retention pond. So that's our third variance is requesting uh, disturbance of the wetland. And for the record, the letter authorizing that is part of the staff report. We also have an excerpt of it later in our slides, but that, that was provided to the board, made made public. We have that. Um, board docs. Very right, good. Sorry, Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next slide. 
and uh, next slide again. I'm sorry. Kind of just highlights the awkward shape of this site and how narrow it is compared to, to the property on the left is our Lexwood property. Um, so you can see it has a similar layout to what we're proposing. Yep, and then um, to the to, to the southeast there, like I mentioned earlier, we've got a planned uh, rehabilitation of both uh, Joe Baker Village and Great Mills Court as well. So those properties are located to the um, to the southeast and then to the southwest there. Um, and then I want to take a moment to kind of highlight like why we picked you know this site. Um, so uh, aside from the ability to scale management with um, the property across the, the street. We believe it is a well-located site. Um, it is near uh, Great Mills High School. Um, from what I understand, it's also near the new uh, YMCA, which I think will be a great amenity to the community. Um, but also you've got an existing bus stop that is um, it's the Joe Baker Village bus stop, which provides obviously public transit, um, which is uh, very beneficial to our, our residents and our communities. Um, and then also uh, at the, the time of application, this, uh, this project site fell within what is called a uh, community of opportunity. It's a designation from um, the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. And what that designation did is it uh, pro provided um, an, an, a geographic incentive uh, to build affordable housing in sp specific areas. Um, and that was part of our uh, it was necessary for our competitive scoring to ultimately win the the financing to complete the uh complete the project so um next slide please so that's just uh you know a zoomed in view and like matt said the uh Luxwoods apartments is uh across the street um next slide uh, matt would you like to talk a little bit more about the site no, I mean, I think we kind of, actually, why don't you go to the next slide? Um, just this is a more zoomed in view. So other than the road, um, like Chase alluded to, we have a lot of sidewalks that connect along Lexwood Drive to get you to that bus stop and then hopefully to the new YMCA once it's built. But everything in white is going to be grass and or a trees that are existing. So that I just want to again say we're not having zero open space. There is still the allotted normal amenities that we would typically provide in any of our uh, neighborhoods. Uh, next slide. And that's just a snapshot of the uh, elevation. So th this is a fairly, um, I don't want to say rudimentary, but kind of straightforward um, rendering. Uh, like I said earlier, our elevation and our exterior facade will mirror what we have at Luxwood's uh, apartments across the street. Yeah, so this is just the entry drive off of Lexwood, and then you can see the, the playground in the center and the, the green grass around. The smaller building in the center is the community building for the residents. Yep, and then the uh, the next slide is just uh, another view of the development, which will be the, um, the back half of the development. Um, and then uh, next slide, please. Um, and this is the uh, the MDE letter of uh, of authorization uh, that we that we alluded to. Um, Chris, do you want to speak to anything else about the the letter? No, I, I think it's explanatory. If the board has any questions, I can certainly do my best to answer, or we can ask Mr. Mudd to to join by phone. Um, that authorization does allow the development to proceed. There, it is required under ordinance to get a variance if you're going to disturb a wetland, as Matt mentioned. Uh, this was sort of created by the other runoff. We believe that this uh, site will actually improve the quality of that runoff, and, and the state of Maryland, I think, has um, essentially agreed that it, that it's uh, within its parameters by issuing this letter of authorization to do that. We still need the variance from the county, uh, though, to do what the state has authorized. Next slide. Very good. Uh, thank you, Chris. So um, in summary, the, the, the project that we are proposing will provide uh, very much needed affordable housing um, in a opportune location um, within Lexington Park. Um, we're served by public transportation. We are near amenities. Um, it, is, it is in an area um, with existing affordable housing, but you know it'll be a, a common ownership across all of those properties. Um, we have more than adequate traffic capacity off of uh, Lexwoods Drive. Um, you know, we will be providing a clubhouse, recreational facilities. Um, overall, I think we're proposing a, a great place to live, right? 
um, and it'll provide appropriate pedestrian access, um, including accessible sidewalks to the to the right of way. Um, uh, so as we alluded to uh, back on June 26th, the Planning Commission unanimous, unanimously approved the site plan for the project, um, and the project meets the requirements for our requested variances. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so what we would request tonight uh, is that you would uh, grant our uh, request to approve a variance to reduce the undeveloped open space requirements of the zoning ordinance, uh, grant the applicant's request to approve a variance to reduce the minimum 20 foot width of a townhouse to a minimum of 16 feet, and then finally grant our request to grant a variance to disturb the wetlands on site. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lama, you have anything else to? Uh, we're certainly available for questions. Again, Mr. Mudd, I can patch in through my cell phone. Right. I, I mentioned Ms. Clements and put them up to the mic. If you Anyone have, have any questions of yes. Mr. Richardson? Uh, early in your presentation, you said in the marketing area, the rental population was 35.5%. What is your marketing area? So the I was referring to the, the market study that was performed as part of our submission to Maryland DHC. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear. I'm, I'm a little hard of hearing. Yeah, so I was referring to the market study that we prepare as part of our submission to uh, the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, the figure I was re referring to was that um, within the market area, more than 35% of, uh, I'm sorry, 37% of the renters in the market area pay more than 35% of their income towards housing expenses. And by the federal definition, that means that they're housing burdened. Okay, so your 35.5% your was not Lexington Park, it was just something that Maryland gave you. So it's, it's the area that is uh, California, Lexington Park, Callaway, and then it would go all the way down to Piney Point as well. So if you could imagine kind of a map of those. And it uh, goes down south to Scotland as well, yep. you know, as part of the study. So it is, it is an actual study of, of, yes. our, of that portion of our county, of those yep. communities within our county. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, 35.5 of total residence rent is what that one is saying. Yes. Yeah, within that area. Uh, and as far as parking, uh, how many parking spots per unit? Matt, Matt, do you know off the uh, top of your head? Pull it up. I, believe, I mean, it, it's within conformance. With the, yeah, we're not asking for a variance. Uh, we're not so asking whatever for is variance. required by your ordinance. Yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head. but Part of it has been approved by the Planning Commission. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah, and the Planning Commission did directly ask about the, the parking, and I know there was testimony there, and, and Matt, I think you just uh, stated it as well, that it does meet the, the zoning ordinance requirements for parking for, the, for these number of units. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, why are y'all dropping the units down from 20 feet to 16 feet? So when you when you think about the the constraints of the site, um, and I'm going to let Matt elaborate on this as well, but th it's a it, it's a density question at the end of the day. It's being able to to fit the number of units that makes an economically viable project, right? Um, but it also furthers the cause of building more affordable units. Ultimately, well, it's money. It, it's it, there that plays a factor into it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, when we apply for the financing, um, you know, we have to have a, a viable project, right? Um, so having that reduction in the unit size allows us to make the project viable and therefore build, build the housing. Um, at the same time, like I said earlier, you know, the, the square footages that I alluded to for the, uh, the two and three bedroom units are well within, if not above what we typically provide um, for our uh, other townhome communities and uh, apartment buildings. And I will say, <clears throat> um, just to follow up on that, it's just the, the two be bedroom uh, townhomes that we need the width constraint uh, reduced. Um, and the, the shape of the site too did play into it. It wasn't just money. By adding the, the, um, the circle drive, we took up, you can visually see it's almost half the site with just the drive aisle. Um, so it really, compressed where we could actually build 
And to do 20, I mean, you're losing a lot of units. So we decided to go deeper because the way the circle formed the site, we had that space to go deep. We didn't have it to go wide. And if you look on the left side there, I mean, adding another one or two feet to each of those units, you're, you're losing two units, three units there on the left alone. So it was site constraints as well. So by going narrower, did you also go shallower? No, we went deeper. We went deeper. We went deeper. Yeah, they're, so, they're longer. All right. Yeah. To get our square footage. Because, again, we didn't want to compromise on what we're providing, so we went deeper and shallower. So I'm going to pick it back on his question. The 16-foot width units are deeper than the 20-foot width units. Um, I think they're about the same, actually, because we made those 1,400, so they're pretty large three bedrooms. Um, they might stagger a little bit. If you look at the site plan, you can see um, they're slightly smaller. Um, and then our handicapped units on the ends are really long because they don't have a second floor. So okay. you'll notice the ones that are called UFAS are very long units. So all the bedrooms are on the first floor. So, and, and I understand what you're trying to do here, but what you're saying, it's you have to have a certain amount to make it viable for you to even come down to do it. To a, to a degree, yeah. And when we submitted our initial ap application, you know, Matt and I worked with our architect on all kinds of permutations that would fit setbacks and life safety and stormwater and all that kind of stuff. And ultimately, this is the configuration we found that balanced, you know, providing the, the affordable housing that we want to provide, but also giving us the access to the resources and the capital. Because like I said, it's a, it's a competitively financed application, right? Um, so, you know, to ensure the, the greatest odds of receiving that award, you know, we make some design choices along the way to do, to do that. But like I said, you know, um, we're going to 16 feet wide on just the two bedrooms and we're still providing ample square footage within, within so the unit types. 24 of the 40 units yep. get the 16. Okay. And, and just to make a couple of... Have any comparable in the area? Um, I mean, y'all manage other units and other locations. Yeah, I mean, we personally to... have other developments that are, I mean, we range anywhere from 16. I mean, it really depends on the site and what the product is. We go up to 24. I mean, a lot of the older stuff is wider and more compressed. Like Great Mills, is, I guarantee, is probably short and wide. Um, it, it really depends on the site. Yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon at all. I mean, we asked our architect the same question. During the planning commission, she was on the phone call, and I think she even brought it up during the planning commission that it's it's standard for her. Yeah, like it's not. I, I guess I'm I'm looking at it. We don't want to reduce the quality. No, of that's these why homes we, for these people. Yeah, I guess that's why this line of questioning is sure. here right now. And that's why I added this site plan. If I mean the the unit plan in here, because I really wanted you to feel what it was like with furniture, to see that you could actually fit and I guess the, the things. And I that guess you, that was the question: Is there more comparables in the area that? would you, you say you have ones right across the street from it so oh, that's a what, what yeah the, the development across the street luxwood's apartments that's um what we would call like stacked flats or a garden style okay. community um so that is laid out in um that's two-story kind of walk up so it, one apartment below and one apartment and one on top above. so yep. it's, it's not a townhome so it's, yep. like i said everyone's a little different on the product so will this be the, the first of this type of unit in st mary's uh, i doubt I, I doubt it, um, but I haven't done enough of an inventory of the market for affordable units specifically to comment to that. If if it is, then why are we reducing it for some new no, the, homeowners yeah, or yeah. renters than we would do elsewhere in the county well, and I for, think the, for the same type of structures? Right. I mean, I guess if I can jump in with two points, and, and I think this may address that. One is that the density is allowed within the zoning category. There's no density variance. They, they don't need to get extra permission for the number of units that's there. So this site supports the number of units under the zoning ordinance. The reason why we think a variance is appropriate is really the first standard of our variances, which says because of the particular physical surroundings, such as exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape, or topographical conditions of the property involved, strict enforcement of this ordinance will result in practical difficulty. If this was a rectangle site, um, even probably with the same acreage, they, 
they would not need to reduce the width of them because of the exceptional um, narrowness of it and the shape of it and the topographical conditions. Um, that's really what caused the need for this variant. So if there's another site that did not have those um, factors or, or those characteristics, then I, I think that would be a site that a variance may not be appropriate. We think it is for us. Okay, understood. So with this type of site, and we look at the, the oval plan there, if you look behind it, there's a lot of the same size, if not more, green space behind you. Wooded area. Or behind this. Where this is behind the, this the, parcel? The, mm -hmm. Can we bring that up where it shows the, the, before they, there you go. See, right behind it, to the right of that, there there's another parcel there that's probably eventually going to be done the same way. Why wouldn't it have been done? I, I mean, not that it has anything to do with your, uh, um, request this evening, but you, you talk to density and you talk to size and the size of the shape, you brought it up, okay? Uh, so my question is, why wouldn't we have included the rest of that wooded area? And I think the, the variant standards relate to the, the parcel or the property that the owner has before you. I, I, I've never, my, my, I've my never question. looking at a, a neighboring property and saying, it could be wider if you bought that property. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that property, I mean, that wasn't in question. I mean, that wasn't part of the... That, that property was at no point part of the development plan. We don't own that property. We don't have access to it. We, okay. Yeah. And I can't see from the aerial photo, but a portion of that parcel is already developed, it appears, in the upper right. I think there's a yeah. wider view of, of the aerial space. You can see that there's already a development on there. And yeah. I can't say for sure because I don't think I had a, a role in, in working on that project. Um, but... I, my guess is that's part of the open space that they designated as part of the development that's already on there. That isn't a, a vacant parcel okay. that could come in with a new application. Understood. That'd Understood. Be a but that might, you know, just sitting mm -hmm. here looking at that and reading what was put in front of us tonight, um, and you all have made a very good presentation. I've, you, you've opened up a lot of what I've read, okay? The, uh, my, and, you know, you brought up the, the size and the shape of that. Well, to answer, you know, to my question was, could that other be included kind of thing? Yeah, and certainly, you know, certainly if it were part of the site, it, it certainly could be. I think the other um, maybe practical side of it or, or on the ground side of it is with that being undeveloped behind them, there essentially is some undeveloped open space right behind this project. It's not being built, you know, next to another project where you can reach out of your back door and touch the project next door. There so is but just for the record, offer. that property is not currently owned by the same people. That's that, correct. That, that's no, making this presentation a, tonight. No, I'm totally different owner. And my understanding is from your presentation is that that entire site was a wetland. Or pieces of it. Yeah, not where not the whole thing, but yeah. But for for general purposes, yes, yes, the entire site's a wetland. It's a stormwater easement. Yeah, right. So everybody's in that area is running to this location, running freely. And uh, what you're doing is cleaning up this location, yes. cleaning it yep. up. What Constantly. I'm understanding. Yep, that is correct. And this stormwater that you're putting in is large enough to accept what's coming in from your neighbors. Yeah, it has to. It is. Yeah, it covers Part all the planning. neighbors and our site together and treats all of the runoff. And that testimony was before, I apologize, that testimony was before the Planning Commission as well. Um, just, and you, just and you also testified this evening that we're not going from 50% to zero open space. So what is your percentage of open space do you think you'll have when you get done, even though you're asking for zero? It's a definitional problem, uh, Mr. Chairman. The zoning ordinance right now, as this site is defined, it, it currently has 0% undeveloped open space on it because it's a stormwater easement area. Gotcha. So by the definition, it's already zero to redevelop it. Technically, the rules would say you have to now create 50% on something that cannot be because it's stormwater management easement. So we're essentially redeveloping a site that already has no open space on it. But as part of the development process, we need the variance in order to do that. Uh, can I ask, if, if you left it at 20 feet, how many units could you get on there? Matt? 
Um, How much would this really a a affect? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, I mean, looking at the, the left-hand portion, immediately we would probably lose at least two. The bottom, we're right on the fringe of the setback lines. You're probably at least four, and then another somewhere. You're going to lose somewhere between, I, I don't have the math on top of me, somewhere between six and eight, yeah. roughly. I mean, I figured five. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Figured, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that's a big number when you're only developing 40. Yeah, and that's a quarter and with of the property. Getting our state credits, yeah. it's very important to them that we're delivering affordable housing. So the number is very yeah. important to our, our winning concept. And at, at this juncture, I mean, we, we made a commitment to the state, you know, based off what we, you know, achieving that number. Right. So then we, we would be doubling back on that commitment. Um, you know, should we not be able to develop the same amount of units? Now, this might be for our attorney or for John Hauser. When was the 20 feet put into the ordinance and what was the reasoning behind it? So <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, Defer to John Hauser on that. <laughs> <laughs> or to, to Stacy, either either one, if you guys have the uh, the ordinance uh, section handy. It's going to be too far back in time for me, but yeah. I'm off the top of my head not recollecting any amendments that were made to Stacy. It's Schedule 32.1, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not recalling That's any. That's the one we looked at, Rita, and we didn't see it. I didn't yeah. hear it. That's why I was questioning where did this come from now i might just have to reserve on that and while the board takes other questions but before deliberations see what i can find on that and report back okay. in okay thank you um i do have a lot of other questions going to other areas but i don't know if we want to stick with the 20 feet or that portion right now. i think if you have questions let's get them on say ask yep. okay yeah all right um, let's see. The, I guess because I'm newer to this, is the um, parking areas and the driveway, or you know, the, the circle loop, is that considered open space or? I don't believe it counts towards it, unfortunately. Yeah, not, not by the, and I'll let Stacey or John correct me if I say, say something wrong. There's different um, types of open space defined within the zoning ordinance. So there's undeveloped open space, there's, I think, developed open space, there might even be a third third kind. There's different standards that apply to each of them for a site. Sometimes they overlap and they require uh, a lot of the site not to be developed. To answer your question, so it's, it's hard to say whether it falls into one of those categories. It certainly does not fall into undeveloped open space. That means basically leaving it in a natural state and having I believe no recreation, no parking, no driving. Um, and again, Stace, if I'm wrong or, or John can correct me. So that does not count even though it's an open area, even though there's recreational amenities, even though there's sidewalks, all, all those things. That it's considered virgin space. It's considered what? Per virgin space. Pretty much, yeah. I think that's the undeveloped open space definition. I don't have the ordinance in front of me. Okay. But then... Um, this goes to the wetlands area, okay. And I see that you have uh, the letter from MDE. That's correct. Okay, so, but when I was reading it, it said um, to change the course, current, cross section, et cetera, in accordance with the attached plans, but I didn't see any other attached plans for like exactly what you were doing. It's the site plan that's in here, but we can probably, I don't know if we can add that at a later time or exactly what we submitted. Um, but it's our site plan. It's, it's, yes. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, for comfort of the board, uh, my client would have to honor the approval they got from MDE, just like they'd have to honor the approval should the board see fit to grant it to us tonight. So they can't be inconsistent with either one. So if that gives you some assurance, they would have to develop it in the way that they showed MDE. And likewise, they have to develop it based on the concept site plan that was approved 
by the Planning Commission subject to the variances tonight. So, um, so it is all the same plan. Um, it just wasn't attached because the plan's elsewhere in the staff report. The site plan comes in stages, Yeah. okay? So what they're showing us tonight is the final stage of that site plan. If they want to show us all of it, it'd probably be 20 pages deep, mm -hmm. okay. okay, for the entire mm -hmm. site plan. Am I correct in what I'm saying there? Gentlemen. Yeah, the full yes. design set's yeah, going right. to be a large set that right. has all the details. So it has all yeah, the I details. I just didn't on... understand when I was reading right. that. Yeah, that's, Sorry, that makes sense. What, 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 the, what the state is telling them is that they have to follow the plan submitted. And that's what the Planning Commission approved, was that plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Um, then the this was a stormwater management area. Correct. You know, that's what yes. it currently is. Um, did you have the the, the St. Mary's County Soil Conservation? Did they come out and help with this stormwater management for uh, your current plan, like changing everything where you're going to redirect? I mean, I think that's yeah. our civil engineer. Um, I don't know, if Chris. Yeah, that, that. I I don't have the Planning Commission staff report in front of me, but they would be one of the reviewing agencies that has to review the concept. So the the process, and, and I apologize if I'm going too much in detail, the process of getting the concept site plan approved that got approved in June is that first has to be submitted to the Department of Land Use. There are then various reviewing agencies that have to review that plan and submit comments back to the land use staff. Once all the comments are addressed by the applicant, they can then go before the Planning Commission, which is what we did in June. Soil Conservation was one of those those agencies that reviewed. Typically, um, and I don't know if it's a hard and fast rule, but typically concept site plans are not allowed to go to the Planning Commission until you have um, favorable, all the comments addressed by all the reviewing agencies that have jurisdiction. If, you, if we came there and it was not satisfactory to soil conservation, um, almost with certainty it wouldn't get approved by the Planning Commission because one of the agencies that reviewed it would not have a favorable okay. recommendation. I guess that's the whole part that, like, there were other mm -hmm. stages before this that I didn't say. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was the uh, buffer zone for the wetlands. And I know you're saying everything's a wetland, but it seemed like one area was more of the is more of a designated wetland to plan, begin with. Yeah. Do you mean in the new plan, ma'am? Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> Getting there. It's the prior one. Yep. Mm, that one. Yeah, that whole right hand quadrant where it says SWM pond, and you see those circular lines, that's kind of the, the great falling. Okay. So it's that, that whole thing is a retention pond, as someone else mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, and all the outflow from the uh, neighboring sites and our site will flow into there. And that stormwater pond is a facility that will then hold the amount of water it needs to hold and slowly release it so it doesn't flood the neighboring site. So it's all engineered properly. As right, right now, it's literally just an open site to view whenever they're So, today. But I didn't understand. On there, you said you wanted to not have a buffer zone, but on here, you have a buffer zone. Uh, no, they're asking for variance to disturb that. So it's only a small area of wetlands and we're turning it into a pond. So that like that hatched area is the, the buffer. Yeah. So anything they do to build it is called a disturbance. So they oh, want so to when disturb you're building it. the pond. Yes. You have it. to disturb the area to build the pond. Yeah, if you put a shovel on the ground essentially it's technically disturbance. that's disturbance. So in order to create the pond that will treat all the runoff of this site and all the neighboring sites, they, we need the variance because there are some wetlands that'll be disturbed as, as part of that. Okay. Mr. Hauser, you have an answer? Whenever the board's ready, I have I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. answer to your <laughs> question to the best I can. Okay. It's not Schedule 32.1, which are where a lot of where height restrictions and building setbacks come from. It's one of the specific standards in um, Chapter 51 for detached townhouses. It says there that they must be 20 feet minimum in width. Purpose or rationale is not provided. That's been there at least since 2010 when this most recent comprehensive zoning ordinance was adopted. If it is a burning question the board needs to know, I can run upstairs and get, I think I've got comprehensive zoning ordinance for the last three decades somewhere upstairs in the office. I don't know when they were added. <laughs> uh, I just, I was curious, yeah. why did they 
you know, have the, but it I seems don't like... know. Now, here's where I engage in rampant speculation. A quick Google search tells me we are not the only locality in the country to have that requirement. In fact, it seems that many may. Um, that could mean one of two things. Either there's a very, very, very good pressing reason. We've all done that, or we are all copying and pasting from the same <laughs> basic general zoning code. And I cannot tell you which one it's more likely to be. <laughs> um, since we've got this document up, I don't know if you gentlemen can see it or not. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the stuff. Your structures aren't 130 feet in length, so depth. Uh, do they exceed that? And do they have the six foot, where is it? I just saw that. Privacy fence. Six foot privacy fence extending not less than 15 feet. Do y'all meet all the requirements for those? Any of that do you need a waiver on also? Because if you need a waiver, we're here. Right. Um, <laughs> we're definitely not exceeding 130 feet. That's for sure. Right. Um, I remember seeing this rear yard should be screened. There is no attached dwelling units to our rear, so I don't think that applies. And there's your one of your common open area space is number seven. Okay. No, it's my understanding that Pat that we complied with everything, right. but these three things when we went through it are you talking about the fences i'd have to go around the entire community no the yard each uh, yard each yard yeah the yard Privacy for the, uh, the townhouse okay like the little backyard okay See how close would those seat. end units be then because that looks like that might you know, that number 26 and let's say 25. Let's see. Is it 25 one? Yeah, the bottom left. Oh, I don't know. Stacy, where'd it go? <laughs> it Bring back up the ordinance. 25 one? No, 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 the ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. That might be a bad question. I can do that. I think that would be a question. It says fifth. Uh, it set back at least twenty five feet from any okay Sorry. driveway, but fifteen feet from off street parking. Huh? And but something tells me there's a weird section that we comply with. It's not this one. Where's that hole? Is, is, isn't there a car? There's a carve out for affordable and workforce housing, right? There was something weird that I thought. Okay, that you can yeah, call. We, might, we might need to. So is that is that a question we need one. to ask, um, Pat, M Mr. Uh, Mudd? Yeah, I'm Mr. trying Mudd. to call him now, and I'll I'll patch him through. And then, Do we want to hold that question in case we have more for him? Great idea. Yep. That'd be fine. <laughs> Let's hold that question. Uh, and then the other is in regards to the wetlands. So we got two questions, right? Yes. We got the privacy fence. Yeah, you got the uh, privacy fence. The and the setback. Privacy. And the setback you were concerned with? Right, because it looked like two of the units might be awful close if you have to have a privacy fence. What was the uh, setback one, sir? It said 15 feet. This one. I read that as the fence has got 15 feet. Hmm. So if I'm if I'm thinking correctly, what you way you're looking at this is that um, the size of the townhouses would directly reflect here. Am I correct in what you're looking at? No, we're just looking. Well, well, I, mean, I'm I looking was just at. looking at the fences. If it has to be 15 feet, I was looking at the two of the units, 26 and 25. Now, does it have to be 15 feet from the rear building wall? Right. That puts it over, according to what we're seeing on the screen, that puts it over, over the, the line. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's we, We're dealing with the, still the size of, of yeah. that. I just want to make sure that we're not running out of rabbit trail. Oh, okay? no, 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 you're right. right. I just want to make sure that we're dealing with the size of the units. Yes. 
in these questions? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So we got these two questions to answer for Mr. Mudd here when we get him on the phone. Are, do we have other questions? Uh, I have one on the wetlands. So with the non-tidal wetland buffer, is there a requirements for a fence to be around it if you have standing water like over two feet, I think it is? Is there any requirement for that? I didn't see it on your drawings. We'll ask Pat that, but if right. it's required, we'll absolutely fence it. Yeah, okay. got a question. Whatever's required. Yep. I've got some questions. Look, yep. So, uh, yep, go ahead. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, what was the breakdown? You said 24, two bedrooms. How many three bedrooms and one bedroom? Yep, so there are uh, four one bedroom units. There are uh, 24 two bedroom units, and then there will be 12 three bedroom units. Okay. Now, you said earlier, uh, <clears throat> after doing some type of market survey or whatever, a family of four would, uh, was 48,400. You remember that? Yes, yes. Yeah, so that would be the. Uh, well, what what would you expect them to pay? What what are the rents that I will be be charging? Is that? But the, for that case. For so in that case, you know, if uh, a family of four living in a three bedroom unit, um, at forty percent of the area median income, that rent would be one thousand and seventy dollars per month. Okay, it's, it's what, 40%? So th that family that would be at 40% of the area median income, their rent would be $1,070 per month. Okay. Okay. A um, few observations. I've got a, a, a relative that needs some help from time to time, so I'm familiar with the place. Uh Wanted to ask you about uh, when did that fence go up? The fence that it currently exists at the property. Yeah, that's been there for years. I, I think it might have predated, predated our involvement with the property. Uh, what was the purpose? Again, the, the, that before us, the, sir. Before I'm not okay, really sure. So I'm it sure. had nothing to do with being a stormwater drainage and storage easement. No, my guess was to keep people from dumping things, which didn't work they too well. They still do. <laughs> it yeah. didn't work well. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, okay. Uh, the, let's see. What's the elevation of the site? It's very low right now. Yes. It's going to take a lot of fill, so we got to bring it up. So right now it's kind of. what's the soil types? Um, type, some type of clay. Uh, we haven't done our borings yet. That'll be a next step, but um, we're going to bring in so much fill that I know. probably, I mean, right. it's got to be structural fill once we bring it in. So, Yeah, just one observation. Uh, right as you come in, Lexwood drives to the left. Mm -hmm. It stays wet. All you, I, well, that's you, a low point, yeah. And that's where we're going to yes. put the pond. So, Well, that's a good thing yeah. because that area, you know, even in the – hottest days in the summer i bet because it's shaded yep. too and yeah and you know that draws all kinds of stuff uh let's see uh who who actually manages the property the so the property will be managed by uh tm associates management um as i mentioned earlier uh they have they manage our property across the street Lexwood's apartments. And where are they located? Their their corporate office is out of uh, Rockville, Maryland. But the ma the the manager themselves, the, each site has a manager, right? So it'll be, you know, full time manager, full time maintenance person at the property. And where does he? Okay, if I wanted to get in touch with somebody, where would I go? So, you could go to the leasing office at the property. Yeah, so all the properties we build generally have a leasing office, a community center. You know, when you, uh, if you go during the, the managerial hours, there is some, somebody there you can talk to. About. Well, where is the leasing office? 
for this site. So it doesn't. It'll be in the community it'll building. It'll be in the community building. So on the okay. graphic that you just brought up, see that CB? You pull in. Yes. Dead straight ahead. That's right there. And so they're going to manage that themselves. Yes. Well, it's okay. a big company. It's a yeah. huge company. Yeah, it's professional management. So so TM manages something like 16,000 units across the United um, States. Okay. Yeah. I was riding down the road uh, to go to a, see someone. And I saw a mass of people out there. And I said, someone was with me, and I said, well, roll the windows up and duck down because okay. I'm not sure what's going on. It was a mess. We drove through there before this, and not a problem. And <laughs> it wasn't a problem. Yeah. And I said, well, why is everybody here, you know? People can stay inside once in a while. Well, they were smoking. So they're smoking because we don't allow smoking. So it's going to be, you know, so you're going to have the same thing on your side. It's going to be, you know. Yeah. The smoke-free zone isn't going to be for, There's for an area, pedestrians. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I mean, that's one way to um, do yes. it. I'm not saying that's... Uh, the best way, but uh, parking. Oh, no, first off, in front of the place, right across from Lex Woods, you know, uh, it looks like the, uh, the uh, curb and gutter stops at Joe Baker Village. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll be extending That's the road, the curb, and then adding a sidewalk. Okay. Yep. Well, let me tell you this. This is really a sad story, or well, it could have been. So I was riding down there, and I went past the, I think, where this main entr entrance is going to be. It's That kind of lines up with the other one, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I went down there, and I noticed over the corner of my two kids kicking a ball around. Well, guess what happened? It goes between two cars. Kid runs out in front of me. You know, it could have been bad. Yeah. But my my question is, why is everybody parking on the road? They continue to do that, and who manages that? I would assume the county's going to have to. I mean, that's not oh, our property, so you obviously. Think but that I don't. Everybody's got to call the police. You know to. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a public road, so we can't enforce anything on the road. But I did see one parked when we came by. I agree. I don't know why it's there, who it's for. I mean, if you drive through the any of the parking lots of any of these um, housing neighborhoods, there's plenty of spots. Like, there's no reason for a resident to park in the street. Okay. Yeah. Like but that's not something that aren't the parking spots allocated or so many per house. That's the way they used to do it. Yeah, I mean, typically we don't have to because, I mean, this demographic. Well, not unless it causes a problem yeah, I mean, this, with a safety problem. Yeah, this demographic, you know, a lot of people don't have cars, and that's why public well, transportation is important. Correct. So, and then some of them have three or four. Yeah, that, three of them are broken. One and runs. that's right. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> how it works. We try yeah. to enforce that, too, to not have that sitting around. Okay, so it's going to be uh, the great smoke out is going to be right in the middle of the road again. And, uh, and okay. Good. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to say. <coughs> okay. Although I'm critical on some of these things, uh, the purpose of this variance application is to provide attainable housing to a market segment that is in need. That's what trumps everything for me. Okay. That's and why we do what we do. Yes. Uh, I'm not grading you. Yeah. On your success. Okay. Uh, 
I think that's it. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? No, sir. No, sir. I have one, one no, other. Sir. Is since you're since this housing unit is so close to Carver and to Great Mills, Carver Elementary School and to Great Mills, especially for the Great Mills students, is there any thoughts of doing uh, like a sidewalk path or whatever so that the students could walk there, um, ride their bike? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, there is, I can say there's not only because we don't connect to that property, but I guess or great baker does i don't know typically schools don't love it when you provide a cutway into their backyard <laughs> like they yeah. tend to look down upon it um, um what was it uh not duke great mills no there was, uh, there, what's the one that's back in hollywood greenview uh, um uh, uh yeah not green holly not greenview knowles it's green something yeah, uh, that Evergreen. is Evergreen. 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 They did do that for the um, apartments and, and things like that. They provided a way so that the kids could ride their bike or walk. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was wondering if there was any plans. The, diff plans the one difference there is those lots were designed that way and the property all abutted the school. This property doesn't abut up against the school. <clears throat> they don't own a property the between them and the school. Yeah. Okay. So that was in the design for it. Here, they've got other properties between them and the school. And there's a fence uh, right back there by the track. So. Okay. I think the kids are hoofing it down the street. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they probably want to come down the street and go to 7-Eleven first for the good Yeah, school. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other nice questions? thing is they are adding the sidewalks and, yeah. and right. things along the road, so that will make it a safer walking so path. So the area. Path, yeah. Sidewalks only going to be in that one in front of your property, right? You're not extending sidewalks past that. Um, not. I mean, we don't own the property going towards right. like the uh, commercial property, but the other side of the street does have the full sidewalk up to the, like the bus stop. Okay. So we'll have a crosswalk to that, so they can safely get All right. to that. Um, while we're talking safety stuff, what about lighting? I didn't see that on any of your drawings. What about parking lot lighting? Um, yeah, we'll do a, I mean, this that'll be part of uh, Pat's final engineered plan, but we'll have to do a photometric and have your, whatever the code requires. I mean, we always have adequate lighting. We but he should, he should have already presented something to the planning commission. Yeah, I'm sure it was in his full package and whatever is required by code we're doing. We're, I mean, right. we also do cameras. Yes. Um, pretty robust camera systems. Yeah, I mean, security systems, yep. Safety's pretty high up on our list. All right. All right. Mr. Lombard, you want to give Mr. Mudd a call? Okay. Do you mind putting those, uh, that code extra up that you were talking about, like the 20 feet? Yeah, thank you. Hi, Chris. Hi, hi, Pat. I have you on speakerphone, and I have you in front of my microphone um, in the boardroom okay. right now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you need to swear him I in? I do. I do. Okay, so Pat, uh, Chairman um, is going to swear you in right now. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Mudd? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Great, Mr. Lomar. Okay. We need his uh, name and address. Yeah, for the record, if he would. Yeah, Pat, can you give your name and address Thank for you. the record, please? Sure. Uh, name is Patrick Mudd. My address is 103 Glades Turn, Panama City Beach, Florida. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, there were a couple of questions that the board um, had, Pat, that we thought would be best for you to address. One is, and you have the section of the code, there's a provision within the zoning ordinance that talks about fencing um for townhouse units and there's a question of whether that would apply uh, do you have the code provision it's 51.3 picture 14. pat pat do you remember way back when we were looking through all these ordinances and we were determining which one we actually fell under 
Yeah, I, I have that recollection, yes. Do you recall, because they're looking at the one that's called dwelling unit attached, and for some reason I felt like that's not the one we ended up falling under. Um, we, we are not a townhouse project. We are a attached dwelling unit, but more like an apartment complex and not so much a townhouse project. Because there's there's no you know townhouse property is a uh, project is usually defined by uh, ownership of each individual unit. This particular project, every all the buildings are owned by the same same person. There's not individual ownership of the of the units. So when we went through planning, what did we go in and ask? Because I feel like it wasn't this. Because y'all are using townhomes in your. The wording townhomes in your um, pr proposal here. Uh, I believe it went in as, as um, multifamily uh, units. And I don't think that the townhomes aren't even the, the term in the ordinance that we're looking at. It's attached, attached units, is that what it was? I can't see it in the front. Attached units, yes. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a seven attached dwelling unit buildings. So the, the specific question, Pat, was relating to some of the requirements in the attached unit. I believe it was use 51, is that, am I remembering that right, Stacey? And, and whether yes. those requirements applied, and, and if so, there's a question about the fencing requirement on the rear yards of the unit. Okay. Well, there hasn't been any comments from uh, land use uh, with regard to fencing. So there has not been any proposed um, at this point. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, you can't hear. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, even so my, the question is, and, and Mr. Barrett is correct, in granting of these standards, especially to reduce the minimum of 20 foot width, it specifically says townhouse. Yep. And that's why we were going on with these others from uh, 51.3.14. And we were going by those standards as it relates to the stand to the townhouses, not an attached dwelling. And that's totally different in your request. And on slide six of your presentation, you call it townhome width, and a variance request for townhome width. Right, Pat, can you hear the comments? Right. Um, I guess the, my response to that is the uh, ordinance says that when you have a uh, townhouse product, the minimum width is 20 feet for per unit and uh, land use had said to us that we needed to get a variance from that particular standard so right. was the land use and growth management considering this townhouse units as well i'm sorry i couldn't hear all of that We're pat up. sorry this is john hauser um county attorney's office can you hear me okay I can hear you, yes, sir. So, Pat, I'm looking both the, um, or Mr. Mudd, pardon me, uh, both the staff report and the, from the Planning Commission and tonight say that we are dealing with use type 14. That's attached units. That's where you get the 20-foot requirement for the minimum width of a townhouse. It's also got this fencing requirement, and I'm just not seeing anything in either staff report that says we were looking at any other use type for it. Um, I'm just wondering if there's somebody at somewhere else I ought to be looking for this. Well, no, the, um, on the construction plan, on the, on the uh, concept site plan, on the cover sheet, it states the use that uh, was agreed to between our client and, and land use. And I, I don't have the plan in front of me, so I, I can't tell you exactly what that is. But that's the use that we were... Um, uh, designing the project under. Let's say 14. 14 is what the staff reports say. That's, that's again, the that's what we've been talking about with the fencing requirement as well. Now okay. Up the... And that's what's on 
the uh, cover page if you go to the left in here. Thanks. So, Pat, yeah. did, I, did I hear you that during the site review application process comments and at the planning commission that the issue of the fencing, I, I don't recall it planning commission, but did you say it wasn't brought up in any comments from the land use staff either? Uh, that's correct. I don't have any comment that states we need defenses between the, the units. And for what it's worth, I do not <laughs> see any comment in the staff report either from the planning commission, certainly not tonight either. And the, the site plan, Pat, as I recall, was approved subject to only the three variances that we're requesting tonight. I believe the letter might be attached. Is that your that's, recollection? That's my recollection, yes. Yeah, because site data says dwelling unit attached. We just looked at the um, regulations for site dwelling unit attached. Your presentation calls it townhome under requested uh, actions tonight. The staff says townhome. It's not that we're trying to get caught up on whether you guys need a fence 15 feet from something or not, but it sounds like there's a couple of questions because if the planning commission is looking at one variance and we're looking at something different and they don't match. If we give you a variance, we may not have given you the right variance and you could wind up in a lot of trouble or somebody could wind up in a lot of trouble. So it's better if we work this out now and come to understanding what we're talking about because we don't want to give you guys something that doesn't allow you to do what you need to do. And conversely, we don't want to get into trouble for giving you guys something that wasn't right. <clears throat> it looks like um, <clears throat> under that code section, the way it's written, uh, related to dwelling unit attached, mm -hmm. that a townhouse, at least for these purposes, is a dwelling unit attached because it, it, it talks about townhouse over and over again under that section. So I, th I think we might be saying the same thing, just using it interchangeably. Just a terminology? Yeah. It's kind of yeah. a semantic challenge as well. Yes, it is. Like if you think yeah. about it, like we're, des we're describing a type of structure. Right, that is so it. The, the difference between the two is the units are owned, are rented units. Yes. And owned by one person. Yes. Or by, corporation. By, yeah, in this Townhouses case, liability company. Are yep. particularly owned or rented, but each one of them owned individually. Yes. Right. In order for, for that to occur, there'd have to be a subdivision application. Our, our ordinance requires you to get a. A formal subdivision if you're going to sell the townhouse that okay. comes as individual units. So are, are uh, we, Mr. Scott, okay to follow the 51.3.14 and well, those dwelling units attached? When uh, I get, uh, and, and of course, go ahead. The, the one, one thing I'd like to, to mention and share with the, the board, the letter from Director Andritz, who... Um, issued the letter after the planning commission approved our, our plan as part of the staff report the concept site plan was approved with only the need for three variances before before we can get a final site plan i don't know that the the details of that use would be more of a concept site plan issue than it would be relating to the variances that well at the concept site plan if you go back for the final and they require the fences you lose your density on your units no, according to the site. That. Okay, so it does kind of re relate directly to that, at least two of those units. Or more. The size of I the units. I understand it could apply the, the, neither the planning staff nor the planning commission has raised that with my client. This is, you, you are the first board to raise it. And so, the approval they got did not require fences to be added to it that they got from the planning but did they understand that CCEO, uh, the 14, that they're asking for the variance from, if you go down and look at 14.6, uh, you know, it starts talking about it right there. And then 14.5, 14.8.5 talks about the rear yards. So you're still going to need a variance. So if they're going to look at that for townhouse with no less than 20 feet, it's, it's all there. 
It's all the same thing. And I think where so, Mr. Bradley is going miss it. is if the you go back for your final, and that's being administered by the <laughs> Director of Land Use and Growth Management, right. if that person sees this and says, oh, by the way, you still need to do this, you may have to come back here. I have a thought on this, just, just thinking. Is 26 and 25, because those seem to be kind of the issue ones, could you, since they're end units, could you make those 20 feet wide and shorten them up and then it, it, you have to put a fence in. Still got room. You have room. I know that would change the plan, you know, the diagram, the plan or whatever on those two units. But then if you did that, then you wouldn't have to worry about if you put the fence in. Well, the, I don't. I don't think that we need to sit here and. No. I'm just. I, right. I, I know. I, I was just. Yeah. No, no. But you, you got your point on. But if we sit here and try to do that, but we're going to be here to midnight. Yeah, and their concept site plan's already right. approved. It's already approved. Oh, yeah. okay. So we can't change that. Brainstorming, though. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and and, and I, I think we're just. And I guess I'd caution us from speculating because we're not design professionals right. and right. we just don't know. So right. Uh, if, but if if that was approved by the planning commission with our defenses, I don't know. Unless it has something directly to do with the size of the units, do we have any control over that? Uh, am I, am I certainly, I, yeah, I think I you're trying to help okay. my client. And yeah. We, we appreciate right. that. Absolutely. Uh, and, that's, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, but and and I think my client bluntly will have to deal with planning staff to see if they raise it. Yes. Because I don't. For tonight, we've asked for three variances that have been advertised before the yep. Sure, and, and and nothing else is really in right. front of us, and due process would say, hey, no. well, the public's not gotten notice right. of anything else. I agree. Something we've done before, though, is we've gone in, and we've done this with things like stairs and stuff like that. We've gone in and said, hey, you didn't ask for this variance, but we see how this applies, and we'd like to go ahead and grant this variance as well. And we, we go did ahead and grant... Yeah, we go ahead and grant a variance for the rear yard, six-foot privacy fence from the rear building wall, and we cover the other one, the minimum distance between structures, and we just go ahead and do that now. We have done that before. Is that legal? I, I think the difference is the earlier case, we knew they were going to have to have right. stairs on that deck, and right. I think with the rear fences, I think we may be speculating. Right. Certainly, it's it's up to the board. Is it right there? <laughs> How much right. speculation? And, and the and when we're talking about like, we have to stay with the three um, variances, but the twenty foot does affect bringing the, you know, making the units longer versus wider. Certainly, I mean, if the board is is willing to grant a variance from the the um, requirements of of use 14 i don't have the section i think it's chapter 51 Four. as shown on the site plan the site plan was part of our application that would address the 20 feet wide and the 16 feet wide together and then my client would have to work with staff if they had any concerns with that that, that might i think we're doing the planning commission's job i, I do too at this point I, to a certain point of it we are the yeah, um I, uh, I think um i think they missed it i think they missed it Okay, and we can't, I don't know that we can go back on that because it's not part of the request this evening. But staff knows it now, okay? So if they need to look at it later, they can. And if these guys need to come back, they just have to come back. How about we let legal talk and then we... He's running out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hauser <laughs> gave up. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. He's going upstairs. He's going to pull the file, right. the Lugum file, yep. or the at least the county attorney's file. Okay. Um, so did we get the other yeah. questions answered? About yeah, I think we, How about let's, defense let's around get the, our other questions answered, and we'll go How about back. defense around the stormwater pond? Yeah, the fence around the, the – Pat, Pat, there was a question whether a fence would be required around the stormwater management pond, I think because of the depth, if it's more yeah, than Yeah, depth feet. of the water. Um, yeah. Yeah, based on the design, uh, it's going to have to have some kind of fencing around it because it's going to be a, a wet pond, which means it'll have a permanent pool of water in it. Oh. And it's it's basically mm -hmm. we are replacing the existing wetlands with a new wetlands. 
and that's the design of the pond. Okay. okay. So there All will right. be a fence that'll need to be installed that'll be on the final site plan. Correct. Okay. okay. See, I can be taught. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's all of us can. <laughs> is that, uh, was that all, all of our questions? That was, that was, we had the three questions. Okay. That was and, it, the setbacks, just... the, the privacy fences, and the fence around the pond. <clears throat> so. All right, thank you, Pat. Are we okay? I think we're done with him. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to let you go, Pat. If we need anything else, I'll call again. I'll be here. Okay, thank thanks. you, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Like said before, we're not trying to be sticks in the mud about no. the fence, no fence. We appreciate but it. we want to make sure that the county did the right thing and y'all do the right thing and whatever we grant here actually helps, not hurts. So bear with us while we muddle through this. Yeah, we'll wait for Mr. Hauser to come down with the yeah. packet. He wants to, I'm sure he's got some answers in that. Let's move uh, while we're waiting for that. We got any more questions of this group? No. No, sir. Then let's do the approvals of the minutes from last month, okay? Okay. Yes. I think Good we have idea. some public yeah. here. Mr. Oh, Chairman, there oh. are a couple of members of the public that are oh, here. Oh, you as know, well. I forgot to open. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, Thank you good. so much. No, no, just wanted to make sure I, they be. Mr. Hauser, okay. is there any public comments? We'll, we'll open a public testimony waiting on Mr. Hauser to get back. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this case this evening? Come forward, please. Mm. Oh. Right. Thank you. Mm. I was trying to move on through here. So if you, if you would please. I will do that. Let me raise my hand so you can swear me in. Thank you. Let's Thank do you. this. Do you declare to affirm and uh, do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimonies, responses, and the statements you both may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Ma'am? Yes. Sir? Uh, yes. Thank you. Ma'am, if you would, your name and address for the record. I got it right here on the paper. Got you. I'll try reading it correctly. All right, thank <laughs> okay. you. Okay, good evening, Joan. So nice to be able to be here, even at this hour. I am Joan Sullivan Cowan. My husband and I live at 21411 South Essex in Lexington Park. In the past few years, we've become community activists for the Lexington Park Great Mills Corridor. We started at this by being members of the steering committee for a community center, which is soon to be realized as a YMCA. Ground will be broken this fall for the Y and located next to the Great Mills Pool. Living where we do makes us very aware of the need for more affordable housing. I am here to ask for the approval of all three of the current <laughs> variances needed to build to build the villas at Lexwood. Our area of the county desperately needs this, uh, this affordable housing. To have all the space needed to build these much needed units, the open space requirements needs to be 0%. The 16 foot minimum width for units is very reasonable. I have lived in a townhouse that we owned that was only 16 feet wide, and it provided lots of living space. In fact, if we go further, the three bedroom units that the Villas is gonna have has 322 more square feet than we, the square footage we have in our three, home, three bedroom home on South Essex. These are gonna be large, wonderful units. And there's no way to build these much needed units unless the wetlands are disturbed and the pond is built to hold the rain runoff. And of course, these gentlemen have heard this before. I've talked before about the need for benches for people to sit on. <laughs> and I've observed the need for benches by seeing all the different places the middle school youth congregate to visit with each other after school. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Ms. Cohen. Any questions for Ms. Cohen? No, sir. No. Thank you, ma'am. You're certainly welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Troy Cohen. I live with her. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all have brought up several very thoughtful questions. Thank you for being thorough. 
to your statement, sir, about it's all about economics, you're absolutely right. 16 versus 20 feet, because the rent that was cited this evening is at least $300 a month cheaper than the average county rent for a comparable unit right now. Mm -hmm. So we're saving money to make the units affordable. The other, th the other comment I would have is within Lexington Park and the areas south of Lexington Park, that's where the greatest concentration of economic need is as evidenced by the five Title I elementary schools in that area. To be classified as a Title I elementary school, you have to meet those income criteria that were just cited to you, being below 40% of the average. I forget the words and I'm a bureaucrat and I shouldn't do that. So the economic need is there. This project is designed specifically to bring down mm -hmm. the cost of housing. We need more housing as evidenced by all the words we get from the, from the public <coughs> schools. They need housing for teachers from our first responders. They need housing for starting first responders. We welcome this project in Lexington Park. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any questions for Mr. Cullen? One sure. question. When you say south of this area, are you talking about Cedar Cove? I, I, I'm talking about uh, from Great Mills down to um, Scotland. Down to uh, uh, Spring Ridge and Ridge and, and uh, Scotland. Okay, so we're not talking about Cedar Cove then? Uh, I'm not familiar with Cedar, Sco Cedar Cove, so, so I'm not going to speak to it. it. It's right outside the gate three. I'm sorry? It's right outside gate three. Oh, yeah. It's all part of that. It's all part of, of District 4 and District 1. That's where the five Title I schools are. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Collin. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. And Mr. Chairman, for us, I think we're going to have to push past 10 o'clock. Uh, I think, can we get this done in 10 or 15? We're waiting uh, on this. We're done you with think, John. I'm asking. Yeah. You think we can get it done in 10 or 15? Yeah. Okay. We're good? All right. So any other people I did would like to speak on this case this evening? Seeing none, we'll close public testimony. And does anyone have any comments on our minutes from last meeting? Additions, deletions, changes. I make a motion that the chairman sign the order. It's just approval for the minutes. That's all we have. To. We have a motion for approval of the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have two orders. One was the Mellon property down in Colton's Point. The, we approved the new dwelling unit for that location. Um, the vote. That night was we all approved it. Here's Mr. Let's hold up. We go ahead. I'm gonna guess we were not able to resolve the fence in my absence. We were hoping you were solving it up there. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> I have some limited access to Logum's files up there. There are two comment notes from the planners. A uh, one on March 24th, 2023, which identified an issue with um, subsection seven of use type 14's rules. One on April 11th, 2023, that identified the issue with subsection four, the 20 minimum width requirements. That tells me two things. One, use type 14 does appear to be the correct use type. I think we've established that. And two, staff was looking over that because it's not just subsection four they caught. Um, don't have anything about the privacy fence there were any indication of why that wouldn't apply here I think that leaves us my mind of how to resolve it tonight and move forward a couple ways one is 
could grant a variance for it tonight out of an abundance of caution and then figure out after the fact if we've met due process concerns. If we don't, it is what it is. We'd go back to the Planning Commission for an amendment. Second, don't grant a variance tonight and see if for whatever reason something materializes of why that would not apply. And I have a couple thoughts. Three, as it happens, our applicants unfortunately came in early before the state of Maryland started talking about making it very, very easy to apply for low income housing projects. There's a pending bill that would likely apply to projects like this that would obviate a lot of our local zoning controls. If that passes in its current form or a substantially similar form, this regulation probably goes out on its own without us having to do anything and before we'd have to have another public hearing. Fourth is, this I believe was mentioned is a partnership with the local housing authority. Yes. There is existing state law that allows just carte blanche that if the commissioner of St. Mary's County or their designee so desire in a given situation um, that when local housing authorities put in for projects like this that we can afford them kind of sua sponte a lot of flexibility. Um, can't promise anything that decision would be made by someone uh, higher than me but there is something on the books that would probably give us a way to get around this even if a mistake were made without requiring a revision to the concept site plan or another public hearing so the most conservative approach would be for us to go ahead and grant a variance and say you guys didn't ask for it but we're going to give you the variance on uh, number five and do it that way and then if anybody complains it might be a moot point within six months or it may not be a big deal anyway i would say so i share some very grave concerns about the due process element of that and the notice and what it means for the concept but again given what the situation we're in tonight and possible ways to solve it seems the one that has the most likelihood of giving us no matter what happens some sort of path forward that doesn't involve us having to go through this again yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of expanding our role where the case isn't, you know, there's an issue in a case that's not actually in front of us, wasn't in the application, and wasn't uh, noticed to the public. Um, but if it's, you know, if, it, if it's the board's will, I think that um, if you want to grant a variance on the fences, I think you would say something like, if needed, based upon the final design of, of the project and only on those units that, um, you know, that uh, it's absolutely necessary to be, uh, to be implemented for. That we, would be my suggestion. We've done things like that in the past where it's if needed and we've kept it very, very, very narrow, narrow in yeah. scope. Yeah. Okay. But I'm, I'm open for that. So, Mr. Payne. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? On this did, we, we, uh, right? did we close the meeting and go to board? I did. Oh, okay. I did. I'm uh, sorry. Yes. It's getting on towards 10, like you right, said. Right, I'm yeah. saying. I, <laughs> I was trying to move through, and I, and I forgot the public testimony. So, and I do apologize for that. But no, we, we closed public testimony as well as after we heard from all the residents out here. And, um, but anyway... Any other discussion? No. No, sir. Comments? Okay. I'm open for a motion then. All right. I'll make a motion. Uh, let me find the right wording. In the matter of VAA 22 0256 Villas at Lexywood, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objective sections of 24.4. Could you leave that up, please? I'm going to need that. Um, the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Ordinance have been met with conditions. Bring that back up, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It and wasn't the site plan, was it? Um, no, it was the um, 53.3.14. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it right here. Have, <coughs> we got it, Stacey. Yeah, you got it. we got it. Uh, let's see, where was I? 
have been met with conditions. I move to approve the variance request from section 32.3.4 and schedule 32.1 to reduce uh, re required open space from 50% to 0% from section 51.3.14.A dot paragraph four, or excuse me, parentheses four, to reduce the minimum 20 foot width of a townhouse to 16 foot <clears throat> from section 71.5.2.B to disturb the non-tidal wetland buffer and from 51.3.14.A uh, parentheses five rear yards screened in from rear yards and uh, attached dwelling units rear yards by a six foot privacy fence extending not less than 15 feet from the rear wall only in those applicable dwellings that it's required um, then this motion's approved. All right, I'll move to approve. I have a motion on the floor. I second. Second, we'll start with Mr. Payne. Yes. 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 So you've seen the boards approve your request and more for you this evening to help protect things and keep you moving. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from the date to order assigned on which any agreed party may appeal the board's decision to the circuit court. Any action taken during that time will be at your own risk, and we will mail you a copy of the order once it's signed. Appreciate all of your time. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Project. Thank you. Yep. Sorry for keeping you two minutes. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. So um, we, have the last, uh, we, have, we have two orders to approve. Yeah. Um, One was the, the, the Mellon property down in the in the seventh district Colton's point where the, the they asked to replace the house with a new dwelling. And we we all voted to approve that. I just need um, permission to sign the order. Uh, vote to approve the order and sign. Make a motion to assign the order, sir. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second one is the um, variance request uh, of the Walker Keller property in the third election district, and that was to replace the house as well, I believe. Walker Kelly was a replacement dwelling. Right. That's what. Yep. Yep. yep replacement house. Yep. And the the vote was was uh, five to zero to approve it. So, just a motion to approve. Motion to sign the sign the order. Have second. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the 22nd, we have another meeting. The second, we have a meeting. Yep. Everybody got their packets tonight? Have you looked at it yet? I have not. I have not. Stand by. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. That's why we're here. Um, any good for the order? Any good for the order? Um, I did say talk with the chairman to see if we could bring back some of the training sessions if you guys would like to because I really enjoyed those on the different topics so if it's possible where we have the little training lectures Don't, um, didn't Diane send an email out about a training session for board members today yeah so I'd like to keep those going yeah um, yeah we can definitely um, be made aware and offer or provide something. Okay. I can work with the county attorney's office also. You had, Mr. Bradley, you had one specifically that you would like to see come back. Oh, yeah. Uh, traffic surveys, traffic studies. Okay. Mr. Gosh, how are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to get a, le a lesson on that. So maybe um, as we go through, if we want to, I don't know how often. Ms. Clements, how often did you did they offer those uh, little training sessions for the board? Um, we've done it about once since yeah. COVID. Yeah, just a once few a times. Quarter. Yeah, once a quarter. Okay. Yeah. So, if we can do the the traffic studies first, get that one on the agenda somewhere, and get someone to speak to that for us, and then from there the board can decide what they would like to hear the next yeah. time. Yeah, we've got the second, third, or excuse me second Thursday of every month is our usual meeting. 
we do have the room scheduled for um, the fourth Thursdays additionally in case we do continuances or whatnot. Right. So we can use one of those fourth Thursdays okay. as an opportunity for our training. So whenever whenever you get it set up, if it's okay, just send out a uh, uh, an email or something so we can all respond and make sure we can be there. Yep, I will work with DPW staff. Thank you, sir. Okay. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.